Hi all, so today, um, as I used to do, we go back to the low middle ages or the second half of the middle ages. I usually <coughs> switch it up like that in order to cover well the old medieval, the old mm, medieval era. Um, today we talk about omnes and chives, that, that means men and citizens in Latin. Uh, relatively to, um, obviously, when we talk about citizens, we're talking about the citizens of the um, so-called um, um, of the cities. Hmm? Um, so the, the 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 commons, the comune, the commune. Um <coughs> as long as um, you know, it, it was a, a broad. European phenomenon, obviously mostly concentrated in um, in central northern Italy, uh, southern France, certain areas of the Rhine Valley, and uh, northern Spain. <coughs> and then this was a phenomenon that uh, typically um, took place uh, from from the the, the twelfth, uh, even earlier. Um, century onwards, and it made a significant uh, difference in the political landscape of of Europe at the time, because cities were growing. So what was happening? How you know these cities became um, 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 a political institution on its own? I mean, a, a, a municipality, a, a community. Uh, uh, the 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 Italian for uh, for mm, these names is uh, according to me the most appropriate because it defines, uh, in from the Italian perspective, the 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 fullest um <coughs> meaning of these communities. So we will be calling them the comuni, mm? like in Italian. Um, how was a uh, comune formed? Uh, well, substantially, um, <coughs> it wasn't um, a much different thing than other, um, um, you know, the, the, the process of formation of other, other communities around there. Uh, the best way was a sworn pact, hmm? a coniuriatio in uh, in Latin, which means, you know, people that swear together mm, as one mm, and that therefore become <coughs> um, citizens in this case of a city um, the mm, obviously the name of comune comes from common you know the, the, the idea that that it's a sort of group uh, that comes to to work together to be to be one thing um and um and and what's really the difference between ominous and chivas we will be seeing it in a while um <coughs> and um we have to distinguish first of all as always when talking about these political and social organizations as something very uh, varied mm, very uh, you know every we can say that every community was something on its own, uh, and it has characteristics on its own. Th there is a very strong particularism in these phenomena. They are not absolutely the same thing. Uh, even if you take <coughs> central and northern Italy, that have this very thick net of uh, of cities of of urban or, uh, and communal organization, what you have basically is that every city was born in a different way. Hmm? W I, I think we will be talking about it about that uh, in in another video sooner or late. Um, and uh, and I think it's very fascinating because you discover that not all the comuni were actually born out of cities. Uh, some uh, comuni were were really born out of villages, for instance, that put together and eventually developed, becoming. <coughs> uh, something bigger, or there were a lot of comuni that actually weren't 
um, weren't um, cities at all and remained rural comuni that maybe had a center in, I don't know, a, um, a burgos or uh, a village or various villages but that really didn't have <coughs> anything to do with cities. So that, for instance, when we look at the political map of uh, of certain areas and we see that basically the wall area is um, such as always in central and northern Italy. That, that is the best example, I believe. You, you notice that <coughs> there are many cities that uh, um, also of a certain importance. Normally these cities are the same Italian cities you find today um, and that have a district. Hmm? From this district eventually came back the <coughs> the, 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 the modern Italian provinces, at least up to the time uh, they were here. Um, and, um, the, um, and, and what you see is as if these districts actually filled up without any space left, if not for, mm, for some noble family ru with rural dominions scattered all over the countryside, to no other um, small comune. But at the same time, you have to think that these districts were the districts that the city actually enlarged over other comuni. <coughs> so that there are ma other smaller cities that uh, usually weren't um, they weren't really cities before the medieval ages, um, meaning that the, that there rarely was a Roman um, settlement before, unlike um, the the other Italian comuni, and and that's also, by the way, the reason why uh, these comuni developed so efficiently because they already had. Uh, the, the the Roman infrastructures that obviously were in ruin, but I mean even um, um, a stone wall can <coughs> in some places um, uh, can make um <coughs> excuse me a big difference between um, um, you know the development of uh, one settlement and another because it obviously has a strategic significance. Um, and uh, therefore, we uh, and and what I'm what I'm saying is that there were many comuni scattered all over the districts of the main comuni that incidentally we think to be the only ones, but there were the other little ones all over the district, and not as powerful as the main one. So uh, this is for telling you that it was a very broad phenomenon that it didn't really stop to a city that is the most famous. Um, um, in you know context in which we find the community being formed, but once again, this is not our topic today. Our topic today is to understand how the um, citizen state mm -hmm. uh, in in Italian it was called the cittadinatico, which means basically, I don't know, etymologically speaking, but it's basically, you know, the, the, the state of citizen. I mean, the fact that you are juridically recognized as a citizen of a city. Mm? There is a broad literature about this, meaning that there was this saying um, uh, sounding like, you know, the air of city makes free, because many people, uh, it was said, but it wasn't really this way. Uh, it's just an example that if you went from the countryside to the city and you lived in there one year, uh, it didn't matter whether you were a peasant subject to a lord, you became automatically a citizen and therefore a freeman. Things, as I was saying, mm, were much more complicated. Um, but let's say that um, it's the, the importance of the um, uh, citizenry that actually had a very political, a very big political weight. And you see it clearly when in the low middle ages all over Europe all these cities began to rise and to, um, to, be, to become very, very powerful. Mm? In Germany, for instance, I mean, th there, were th there were various grades of this because in Germany, for instance, the, um <coughs> the the cities were weren't actually didn't actually make it to become uh, 
um, sort of um, city states on their own they they were always subject to to a to a lord of some kind higher was a bishop usually or even a lord the word the free states the uh, the free cities that the Freie Reichsstädte in German that actually were these <coughs> free cities um, subject uh, for mm, created and founded or better um, you know to to whom was given the right of city um, city rights by the emperors in order to contrast the laws but let's say that in Germany um <coughs> eventually with the disgregation of the imp of imperial uh, authority uh, cities weren't so strong to make it against the lords. If you take uh, Spain, for instance, uh, in Castilla, you find that there were a very few sta uh, a very few cities, or at least a very few powerful ones, because Castile was a largely feudal uh, kingdom. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, uh, it's a bit of an allergy of this brain that makes me cough. Sorry about that. I was saying that in Spain, still in Spain, um, um, Catalon, Catalon, I don't know how to say it in, in English, um, had instead many cities, and these cities were extremely powerful. Mm? Take Barcelona, for instance, that was a very big city, and, and this, by the way, made uh, Castile and Catalonia actually uh, developing a very different institutional system, because uh, in Catalon, uh, the Catalan cities had a very heavy mm, power over the Kingdom of Aragon, while you know in Castile basically they were subjected to 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 the king. Italy is the case in which always central northern Italy, because in the south the Normans and and the other um, uh, di dynasties that that came after them basically choked the development of cities. There were still big cities there, but they were u I usually, you know, um, th they, they didn't have the same political strength that they had in the north and center when they were independent or at least formally autonomous city-states. This for saying what, essentially? That um, Getting a citizen state, especially in, 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 in this Italian context, m meant a lot because these communities were quite active, quite powerful, politically and military speaking, and they could make a very autonomous um, policy against the other territorial powers. Uh, namely, um, the the the, the few, let's say the feudal lords um, that that were there in Italy, like in any, in a, any other post-Carolingian kingdom, but that there but who were um, declining from from the 10th century onwards, exactly because the cities were on the rise, and and and. There, however, can't be a very strict um, differentiation between um, the nobles and s a, a counter position between nobles and cities because what happens is that the nobles became to go living in cities as well. Uh, this is typical of Italy. Basically, these guys said, you know, um, those we li we are rural lords. We we live since the times of the Carolingian Empire. In in the country, mm, the countryside, but these cities are rich and they are competing against us. We don't have enough products. They trade things that come from the other side of the world. We we are not as strong financially as them. So in order to survive, we can make various policies, but we can't even fight against the cities. But the in endly the, the most profitable way uh, was to become part of the city as well and indeed the the foundation of many of many comuni was actually thanks to the same these same nobles that were in, in Italy there was a very um, very mobile um, social ladder in compared to other areas of Europe meaning that the nobles that you could find in cities could be either feudal lords of very ancient blood and ancestry, 
uh, but also um, newcomers that had very obscure origins, maybe they were citizens themselves, I mean, from, th from the middle class. Mm? But the important thing is that um, there was um, a democratic um, uh, settlement at the beginning of the communal age, about which we are talking, because, you know, in, in the golden age of the community, something changed and even during the decline etc because um, basically uh, there was a, a class of knights ruling over cities these so-called milites and these milites as i was saying before were it could be equated with nobles mm -hmm. so they were the same guys that for according to their wealth mm -hmm. according to the census let's say they had to pay were th they, they fitted in this um um, social stratum that was at the top and and made uh, by the way um, possible uh, you know the consular community meaning that initially these guys chose a consul as a military leader that basically ruled over the city because it, it, this was drawn essentially for from their class from the class of knights who ruled the Comune, in, indeed. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it was these guys that were the richest one, the, the, the one who could put, you know, this enterprise of the Comune, say, together, and to invest from their properties that were often outside the city walls. So th they were these huge, uh, sometimes rural estates, um, that could contribute to the, uh, the citizen um, um, economy, economy, and 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 could grow indeed, and in fact these knights uh, were quite important because they weren't just military men; they were they were also businessmen, and and much of these sworn many of these sworn communities, even smaller ones living within the same comune, were actually both about war and affair mil and uh, economical affairs, which was the, the the same thing. Because if I go raiding um, a neighboring comune and I I take a very good um, uh <laughs> a very good um, income from that, um, so that I uh, I take this booty and I want to reinvest it in in the city market I, I can invest again and maybe creating um, specialized agricultural uh, crops and, and other stuff that make me rich again in fact much of the uh, urban expansion in these years not just in Italy but take I don't know the the German ministeriales or the relationship of pariage in France actually started from these lords hmm? who incidentally in Italy were also urbanized, so they they played from the city differently from, from other areas of Europe. Um, this implied obviously that, mm, that these laws were very different, they, they some of them could read and they, they, they were skilled in, in, in juridical affairs, something rare elsewhere in Europe, but th this has always been the Italian exception in European history during the Middle Ages. Um, <coughs> and, um, and in fact, when um, uh, these very powerful families or personalities uh, of, you know, that belonged to, um, that had a high social status, um, the, the state of citizens became basically the gluing factor for a political and military alliance. Um, um, even when um, they were formally subjected to the comune themselves. It is a bit what I was saying before, that these guys created a comune that was essentially a public thing, mm? meaning that they created public power that um, very often, especially in the cities, uh, com um, Comuni wasn't uh, created out of a vacuum or out of the blue, because usually um, in the cities were already seat of a public power within the Holy Roman Empire, meaning that the city was um, governed either by a, a bishop or, or a count, 
or or maybe the same thing, meaning that maybe the bishop even had um, comital uh, rights. Um, um, and therefore, wha what happens is that in the genesis of the Comuni is that these um, um, sworn um, uh, alliances basically replaced the former public uh, power in, in many ways that we won't be seeing today, but that is they essentially over first of all overlapped it and eventually substituted to it. Um, and they, they got the same rights over the district, over the comitatus, which means, in fact, the, the etymologically speaking, the, 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 the land pertinence of the count. Um, and, um, and, and therefore, theoretically, when this uh, alliance was created, all those who had contracted it uh, were formally subjected to the good of the community. So the Comune formally ruled over these people. But, uh, and, and these people had obviously financial and military duties, therefore, in, in when living in the Comune, but essentially, an, at least until the consular system held, and the people, I mean, the, the, the medium class wasn't very powerful, wasn't very rich, these knights that had created the uh, the comune were the de facto rulers of the same comune and, and, uh, and of the city, even if not completely, because in fact they were the only ones uh, living there. Um, um, so, who were the homines instead? Well, the homines were um, substantially uh, Homo hominis in, in Latin means essentially man. Mm -hmm. It's a very, uh, it means even human as a substantive, you know, it's a very generic sta uh, statement. This meant what, in a feudal perspective from which the, uh, the, the community eventually arise, because the, the former mm, organization was actually based on this rural and feudal uh, communities. The, the ominous were essentially a generic name for saying the men, mm? the people broadly, meaning that only the males had um, rights in this sense um, uh, of contracting, you know, new um, new organisms, new political organisms, and they usually were rural communities. Mm -hmm. So people who lived in, in in the country, maybe in the city district, mm. um, and um, who were mm, rather differently organized into a rustic comuni um, uh, that were tied to normally to the local seigneurial rights. Um, <coughs> I mean, to, to the power of the, the rural lords that, that were there in the country. Remember, the, the lords lived in the countryside very approximately, and the cities were, <laughs> the citizens lived in cities indeed. Um, so these ominous belonged usually, or at least initially, uh, were communities that belonged to the lords, the feudal lords that had rights over them, um, that were created, obviously, mm, you know, and it was a, a double, you know, mm, the, mm, usually the, the Lord had to protect them, and, and, and in order to do so, they had to, they had to um, um, furnish mm, mm, resources and military aid to the Lord in order to even protect themselves. This is how things were were born initially, and um, and uh, these ominous obviously uh, were here in the middle between the affairs of the uh, you know while the the cities were growing and the rural lords were mm, getting into the cities or maybe fighting against them. So the ominous played they the weren't absolutely in influent uh, communities because they weren't. Um, as you have, you might have in um, prejudice of medieval history, these poor 
uh, uh, peasants oppressed by the nobles. No, no, they weren't quite active. They were quite uh, on the rise as well in certain cases because they had rural resources that could grow. They were a demographic power sometimes. Um, <coughs> and therefore they also came into play between the um, the lords and the uh, the citizens, um, and especially since the end of the um, from the end of the 12th century, um, these ominous chose prevalently to um, to form a bond um, and to tie themselves directly with these. Um, city republics that were rising, becoming what essentially becoming citizens, chiefs of the same cities, um, because obviously it was seen as mm, very advantageous um, in many ways because they uh, these peasants could um, tell the lords goodbye. <laughs> Um, um, you know, they, they probably weren't quite happy to be under that load and becoming part of uh, a, a republic, essentially, where there were these citizens that, theoretically speaking, all participated to political affairs, who were free men. That also, that is also is quite important indeed, and, and that's probably one of the first reasons why they went to the city. That's wha why it, w it was said that the uh, um, the the air of the city makes free, because it was believed indeed that um, once you went in the city, you know how could the um, the lord claim you back uh, uh, as a subject, and obviously the cities benefited from this uh, because the, m the more people came to be part of this um, pol new political organization, and the more the city could you know, even resist and expand eventually against the same rural lords and gaining their lands. Mm -hmm. So there is m a substantial help of the rural hominess to this um, process. Um, um, and, um, and by the way, this wasn't just felt as, uh, you know, the city against the nobles, but it was a, 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 a very more complex thing, like we said at the beginning. Because the city was obviously divided. As we've seen, there were different social classes. Mm? And, and, and since the knights initially uh, ruled over these other mm, people, normally artisans and other craftsmen or traders mm, that made up th the people. Um, in, in, in Italian in the it was called the popolo, so literally the people. Mm. Um, the commoners in a way uh, of the city. Obviously there was also a, lot a great deal of social uh, infight between these social classes. And indeed the ominous weren't obviously very rich at all, because there were peasants or people living at least in, um, in you know, poor conditions that the the made of the number and not of the <laughs> the, s the individual wealth, their power, could fuel the numbers of the people who could eventually oppose against the knights, um, and this is what mm, happens. This is a very it's a fundamental dialectics of uh, what ha would happen in the comuni, in communal history, uh, between social uh, classes. Um, but it's even more complicated than that if you consider that um, the, um, the uh, urban communities, um, uh, even if, if they came um, to help these rural um, uh, these rural communities um, that contested the power of the um, seigneurial um, let's say of the local wards um, it wasn't true that this happened all the time because sometimes the alliance that was forged was between the citizen authorities, uh, I mean the, the urban organisms, um, 
um, and the same um, lords um, against the uh, rural homines. Um, and uh, and this happened, um, let's say, more systematically than the one you might think. Why? Because um, how did um, these citizen communities normally expand into the district and extend their authority? It was a very slow process, also a very complex one. If we are lucky, especially during the, the period of people regime, when eventually the people took the knights away, or at least um, subordinated them to, to its power in later com communal history, you usually have what is called a documentary revolution. Mm, a revolution always in brackets. I, I don't like it at all as a historical term. But indeed you can see that these people were much more um, you know, uh, framed into a, uh, a, a written uh, form of administration that could um, make, uh, could produce a huge quantity of documents uh, that show us what was happening juridically into the district. Because this is how it really happened. Um, th the Comune really didn't went on the rise, militarily speaking. Um, it, it, it happened, but in this initial stage usually it was more city against city, more than anything else. And within the same district, when there were uh, still other rural uh, laws that indeed fought, also militarily speaking, but the main weapon was used was law. Mm? Juridical power, especially in cities, was extremely, uh, was the, the strongest weapon, we can say, because there was actually a public framework on which to build it up. Um, and it was developed in this way exactly uh, for this reason. Um, and what happened is that the city began to say, you know what, as a city now in this uh, area of the district, now we, we want to, um, there is a problem because maybe the rural peasants, um, the, the peasants are fighting against this lord and they can't get, um, you know, they can't um, arrive to a solution. So we, as a city, since maybe one of these powers actually asked us um, to, to, to arbitrate this, um, uh, this quarrel, uh, we uh, decide who gets the right, um, and 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 in this way, the city, the urban elite could actually shift mm, riches, powers, rights to the side that they wanted, mm? because obviously, if I am a rural lord that has fortresses in the district, in the countryside, and incidentally. He's part of the citizen elite because he's a knight, he's a menace, and he um, he rules uh, um, the city uh, w together with uh, with other fellow men. He can impose through the city, so through the public right, um, 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 uh, um, let's say a, a, um, a power, a right, a settlement, so that he can benefit from it. So in this case, the city can even mm, go over <laughs> the poor homines, uh, while uh, the lords and therefore the the, the city knights um, can grow uh, uh, their power uh, increasingly. And this is one of the ways that indeed made the same city power eventually growing, because maybe the knights a century after decayed, um, and the people took power. But the the ones who actually benefited were the the community themselves. I mean, it were the cities themselves that enlarged their power independently from who actually ruled on them. And this is a bit the uh, let's say a tiny bit of the dialectics between um, uh, urban centers and um, um, the uh, the district or comitatus as it was called and it explains you a bit in, in uh, the interaction between the chives and the homines meaning that 
um, it was a very mm, very dynamic um, relationship uh, it could mm, and and over it could be played really many political games um, games of power mm -hmm. so I thank you uh, for listening ah, it was a, a, <laughs> a bit of a shorter video this time and uh, if you had patience to listen to me up to now I ask you please to um, subscribe to my channel uh, that helps me growing and we can talk more about the Middle Ages together as always I remind you that if you want a personalized video um, um, over a topic you're interested in you can ask me and I will be answering your questions if you have any and that can make uh, our community grow more and uh, obviously the best you can do is also to share this video because that m makes me get views and I, I can make mm, this community uh, grow in a, in a more consistent way, in a faster way and we can uh, all mutually benefit, benefit from it so thank you for listening